My name is Erica, and I'm here to talk to you about contentment. Contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. And I mean, whatever you have. Let's take bicycles, for instance. You can be content if you have the best bicycle in the world, like this one. This is top of the line. You could climb a mountain with this bike, and if you get tired of pedaling, it's got a motor that kicks in that helps you keep moving. Or maybe you have a bike like this. You can be content with an old used bike that's been around the block a few times. It may not shine like a brand new bike, but it gets the job done. But here's something that will really surprise you. That's right. You can be content with having no bike at all. It's true. Not everyone in the world has a bike and lots of those people are quite content without one. In fact, you can be content even if all you have is a box of bike parts. I mean, there's so many uses for a box of bike parts, right? I'm big and you're small. <laughs> hey, big guy, are you gearing up for a fight? <laughs> In today's story, we'll hear about the next step after contentment. I think you'll get a real kick out of this story. <laughs> this is a kickstand. <laughs> so many uses. Man, all right, I'll see you next time. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. As Sarah entered the cafeteria, bagged lunch in hand, Grace waved her over. Hey Sarah, we figured out the service project thing. Sarah slid into the seat beside Grace, across from Cassie and Rochelle. All three of them sported expensive salon haircuts and manicures. Sarah tried to smooth down her own frizzy hair. She was glad that St. Joseph's School requires uniforms, because at least her clothes looked like what everyone else was wearing. Oh, right, the project for social studies? Miss Moss had required that individual groups find a service project to do during the holiday season. I looked through Miss Moss's list. This one's perfect. Grace showed her tablet screen to Sarah. Helping a refugee family? That's a great idea. Yeah, we can just buy them stuff from this list and send it to their new home. Where is the... Sarah looked at the table again, trying to decipher the name on the page. Where is the... K.M.B. Family Living. Somewhere over on the east side, like Grove or some place with those rundown houses. Sarah swallowed hard. She lived on the east side when she'd moved in with her grandma. It was only because of a scholarship that she was able to attend St. Joseph's School. It says here the family needs three sets of sheets. Oh, I know. You've seen those ads for tufted owl sheets? They're supposed to be the best. Sarah's eyes widened. Aren't those sheets like... $200? That's cool. My dad will give me the money. They need dishes. I'll order a full set from Macy's. My mom has a platinum card there. I'll get them a TV. Perfect way to learn English, right? Enter a credit card number and boom, service project done. The girls turned to Sarah, who avoided their eyes by staring at the list of needs on the tablet. Hey, Sarah, what are you going to send? They need winter coats. I saw these awesome tailored down jackets on sale for like $125. Um, I don't know. I'll text you all later. That evening at dinner, Sarah barely touched her spaghetti. Grandma peered across the table, her eyes bright under her wiry white hair. Now, what's wrong, Sarah? Oh, it's this service project I have to do for school. We're supposed to help this refugee family that's moving into a house over on the Grove. The Kembes. That sounds like a lovely idea. Yeah, but everyone else is ordering stuff for them. Expensive sheets and TVs and things. The only money I have right now is for bus fare. What am I going to give? 
You don't have to have a lot to give a lot. You didn't answer my question. Grandma smiled and reached for the worn Bible that always sat on the kitchen table. No, but St. Paul will. Sarah knew that once Grandma got a scripture passage stuck in her mind, there was no stopping her from reading it. Okay, fine. I'm listening. Let's see. It's right here in 2 Corinthians. Paul was writing to a group of churches. We want you to know about the grace that God has given to the churches in Macedonia. They have suffered a great deal, but in their suffering, their joy was more than full. Even though they were very poor, they gave very freely. In fact, they gave even more than they could. Completely on their own, they begged us for the chance to share in serving the Lord's people in that way. But that's still talking about money. The churches gave money. Listen with your heart. They gave from what they had, and they did it with joy. Well, what I have is not money. But you've got other things. Okay, I'm good at baking. I know how to use the bus and get around. I have time, I guess. Grandma beamed and her face crinkled. All good things. Reluctantly, Sarah smiled back. Okay, I'll make a list. Next morning, Sarah's friends crowded around her locker. Hey, have you decided what you're going to buy? Well, I thought maybe the Kayembe family needs more than just stuff. Like how? Maybe they need help. You know, like finding the library, figuring out the bus system. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. But I do. And I googled and found a number for their caseworker. And she said we could help the Kayembes decorate their new home for Christmas. Oh, that's a really cool idea. I found this awesome video that shows how to make Christmas ornaments from salt dough that you shape and bake and paint. You all could come to my place and help. Sure, that'd be great. I mean, it's a tiny apartment kitchen and all. You tell us what to do, we'll do it. Sarah breathed a sigh of relief. Maybe she couldn't send $200 sheets, but she could use her time and creativity and even her grandma's tiny kitchen to help welcome a new family to her neighborhood. The people in the Macedonian churches didn't have a lot. And yet somehow they were okay with that. They were content. And it was that contentment that made them want to share their time, talents, and resources with others. You see, when you learn how to be content, it makes you really see all the good things you have. You learn to be thankful for what you've been given. And the more thankful you are, the more likely you'll want to share what you have with someone else. Like, Maybe I could share these bicycle parts. You know, I'll bet there's a bike somewhere that's falling over somewhere because they need a kickstand. I could give this to that bike. Or someone might need ooh, to replace their chain because theirs is old and rusted or broken. E, let's see. These might even help someone hold onto their handlebars a little bit tighter. I could give all these parts away and help a lot of people. You know, we all have something we can give. Maybe you don't have a lot, but you've got something. You may have money or stuff, or you may have strength to help your family around the house with chores. You may have talent to make people happy, or you can have time to spend with people who don't want to be alone. Honestly, you'll truly start to see what you have to give when you learn how to be content. The Apostle Paul wrote that he learned to be content through the power of Christ, who gave him strength. When you put your trust in Jesus, he can give you that strength too. The one thing to remember today is this, you can always use what you have to help someone else. So think about all you have to give and be thankful. Don't forget what I've spoke in. Get it? This is a spoke. See you around, because it's a wheel. <laughs> Bye.